Well, hello again. I left off with the last video where I was getting ready to work on those indicators out there. And I did work on them for a while, but it got too cold and I had to quit. And uh, I got one of the indicators, uh, signal light indicators off the fender on the passenger side. I haven't done the one on the driver's side. The reason being, I've got a couple of inputs already from folks who have taken those off. One of them being Nick from Vintage Thunderbird Repair and one of our other subscribers, I can't remember his name right now, I'll try to get, to get it to pop up here in a second. They said, you know, taking those fender indicators off were a nightmare. And, you know, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, you know, I took that one off over there at about, in you know, the passenger side, about three minutes. <laughs> it wasn't a nightmare at all. So, Nick says, yeah, right, you know, dream on and all that. And I said, okay, you know. So, <laughs> so I'm going to show everybody just how easy it is to get that, the other indicator off the driver's side fender. Now, you watch and see, it'll probably be a nightmare, like Nick said, but I don't think so. Anyway, in the process of messing with those things, uh, you know, I jumpered the wires together, and I flipped the signal lights on, and guess what? Nothing happened. I had no signal lights. After all this work, I had no signal lights. Signal lights. Now, every other light worked, you know, the uh, the tail lights worked, and the, the uh, flasher lights, and everything else. What was the problem? I said, to heck with it. I'll worry about it tomorrow. So here I am, it is tomorrow, and it turned out to be, I've got a messed up key switch. Now, of course, that's another piece of uh, stuff inside this car that I haven't looked at yet. Did you really expect it to work? Okay, now you notice, see the gap right there where my thumb is? Let me get this light down here a little better where we can see without putting so much of a glare on it. Then I can zoom in. And uh, see that space right there? There's something wrong. See, it? You see how it closes and opens? Uh, that's our problem. Whenever I close it up like that, the signal lights come back on. Whenever I release it, it falls apart again. <laughs> so what I've got to do is figure out how to get this thing off there and find out why. Apparently the key switch works okay. There's just something wrong with the plug on the back of it. So let me see if I can get that thing out of there. I need to probably clean it up maybe bend the connector together or something and stick it back on there. I've never taken one like this off. It ought to be a lot of fun. Well, the old shop manual doesn't tell us a whole lot on how to get this uh, thing apart from back here. Up here, it's pretty standard. And I've done it before with a lot of other car locks. There is a hole in the face of that thing. See the hole right there by my thumb? Uh, you turn this key all the way counterclockwise, insert a uh, bobby pin, or a lot of you don't know what a bobby pin is, but <laughs> insert a piece of paper clip in there, something small enough to fit. You push it in slightly. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. And then you continue turning this thing to the left, and this uh, entire mechanism will come out. Now, that doesn't leave us uh, with much information on the, I guess they call this the basil. I guess this is the basil. I don't know what they call it. They, they, they mentioned basil in the book, but I don't know if that's it or not. I'm going to call it the, you know, the enclosure, the sleeve, whatever, the barrel. We've got to get this out because our problem is back here. But I want to get this out first. And you know, I, I'll tell you what, what I see coming down the pike is me having to buy a new ignition switch, which I am not happy about, but we'll do what we can. Let's get this out first. Remember, I'm going to insert that pin in there. And while I'm holding it with one hand, I'm going to turn the key with the other, and this thing should pop right out and, you know, not be damaged in any way. Well, that was easy enough. Once I pushed it in and turned it just a little bit further, you could feel it give. Then you kind of wiggle it a little bit and pull it back and it pops right out. Piece of cake. All right, enough with that. Now i got to figure out what to do about this mess over here because it does, it does not say... Uh, it just doesn't describe it well enough in the shop manual. I couldn't make heads or tails of it. So I think, uh, now this is your battery supply for the whole thing. This big old thick wire right here. This is your power input for everything. So I'm going to go ahead and try to take that cable off. Maybe that'll help me get down in there or something. I, I don't know. I can't, I can't quite figure this mess out. I don't want to just pry it apart because I don't think that's the right thing. And they don't show it in the manual. Like I said, well, let, let me skull brain it. I'll probably wind up screwing up the whole thing and have to buy that new one. The main power wire is off. It had a lock washer on it. Can't believe it. I actually found a lock washer on this car. This is a rubber part. Now, this black plastic part stays with the key switch. And uh, 
So this is going to have to come off. Now it's kind of a rubber, so I think it should unplug. There's bound to be, let me see how many wires we got in there. One, two, three, four. Well, right now I see four. Should be four female plugs in that thing that plug into males sticking up. Probably goes down at least as far into that black plastic. Let me see if I can get it unplugged. I don't know if it slides up over. I think it slides up over there leaving this screw as part of the uh, switch. We'll see. Let's see what I can do with it. Well, as expected, you can see there it's uh, coming up out of there. I'm using this small screwdriver to work my way around it and unplug it. And you can see that the, this is our problem right here. This plastic is coming loose from here. Well, there she is, clear of the switch. And as I said and, and expected, there's our female connectors in there. I'll have to give it a little clean up. It looks kind of ragged there in that, in that one joint right there. There's that one connector right there. The rest don't look too bad. You know, old Brendan told me, uh, I showed him this already, and he told me this... Uh, these things are made out of what was called white metal or pop metal actually is what we call it and you know he said he has opened up boxes believe it or not old old uh, pieces of equipment made out of that white metal or pop metal and uh, the NOS stuff he took it out of the box and it was already uh, falling apart uh, this stuff cannot be welded and uh, you know it just won't work so you can glue it somebody said you can solder some of it I'm not sure but I wouldn't want to do all that we do not want to take a chance that this switch is going to fail us. You know, if I jam this thing back together with my thumb, uh, I don't want to take any chance. <clears throat> and I'm also, uh, there's no telling how old this part of it is either. So, it doesn't look all that old, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't want to take the chance on it. So, I'm going to just go ahead and buy both the key and, uh, I can't forget what they call this thing, uh, the ignition barrel. <laughs> <laughs> key barrel. Let me see if there's a name for it here. Uh, I turn the key counter, pull the key. A lock cylinder. That's what it is. It's a lock cylinder. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, we're going to go ahead and buy a new one. Uh, I can get this for like $24, okay? A whole new one. This is called the ignition switch. The whole thing, just what you see. I can get that for like $24, bucks, another 10 or 12 for this here. That's not bad. You know, for peace of mind when I go down the road, if I ever get back on the road again... <laughs> <laughs> we're getting ready to vacuum it out however you know after i cut all this metal out of the way i've still got to do some trimming over here this kind of bows down i want to kind of straighten that out if i can i want lots lots of just straight edges to weld to you know my welding's going to be atrocious as it is but i don't care as long as it's in there and it's flat and it's tight it's going to be good anyway uh the result of uh, cutting and everything, there's a lot of pieces of little pointy metal sticking up, jagged everywhere. You got to be real careful with that sort of thing. So before I start vacuuming or anything, you know, it's been a while since I looked at this. I want to double check everything. I'm going to take my ball peen hammer and I'm going to go ahead and tap down any place I can find that's got a little point that would maybe catch it by hands. I got to get some gloves on here, but uh, primarily. That flasher switch, uh, the, the button in the spring that, that flew out of the back of that switch is somewhere in this car. <laughs> and I have yet to find it. It's not down in this area here. So there's only one place left and that's directly below it. It had to have hit here, gone that way, or just fell down behind one of these. These are wire runs. You know, the wires go through these things, the plastic there. The, the wiring harness, see the harness right there? goes all the way up there they're really in rough shape but you know I'm wondering uh, it's possible I think to put these in an oven on a very low heat like 100 degrees and watch them and watch them soften them up enough to maybe reshape them and then let them cool yeah it'd be an interesting experience uh, experiment I mean what have I got to lose you know so we'll try that later I'm sure wifey won't mind me using her oven to melt plastic things like this she'll, oh, she'll probably give me a big kiss well, in the process of tapping around, I found out I'm going to have to do a little more cutting. This right here, man, look at that. That's just goes up and down too easy. Oh, this is the sound you want. When you come over here, this is what you get. Very tinny, very thin. You know, the whole thing was caused by that heater core leaking. It just poured water down all the time underneath the carpet and just 
that plus you know they had it in the mud for quite a while so but that heater core did a lot of damage here it ran down off of there no water got there except for what hit but then it settled in this area here and just rotted the whole thing out but hey we can fix this so i'm gonna i've seen other thunderbirds where the the uh, owners who replaced the floor they had to cut it all along there and then over and then weld another piece there so we're going to be doing this in pieces and parts you know it's not going to be one continuous piece of metal i'm going to be doing it in pieces and parts when i get done i'm going to have a good strong floor it's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world but it will be strong and it, it'll last a long time and it'll all be covered up by carpet and all kinds of other stuff when i get done and uh, it'll look real good trust me it's not going to look like this trust me well i finally found something here after all this time, I've been working on the car. I haven't found anything but one penny. I found a penny. But uh, this here, I got a matchbook cover. What does it say here? It says, Auto Body Repairs. L&D Enterprises. Complete Mechanical Body Work. 507 North State. Ridge Farm, Illinois. Anybody recognize that place? <laughs> and we got a couple of... Either Coke can or beer can tops. I'm not sure which. Well, she doesn't look too bad. I think she cleaned up real nice. That that uh, white stuff you see back in there, that's aluminum foil stuck to this uh, black crap here. It's, it's all insulation, you know, uh, sound deadening stuff. And uh, that was like real thin uh, uh, insulation you would find in the wall of a house, but it was real thin. That's how they did it in the old days. But I got to get this thing out of here. But, you know, that'll be my next step. I'm going to have to get this thing out right here. And, uh, but a lot of these lines are clearly marked. I've got a yellow, a blue, and a red. And, uh, these little vacuum lines here, they got stripes along the side, which is kind of nice. I don't know if you can make that out or not. Let's see if I can zoom in to show you. It's not going to be as complicated as I thought. By the way, uh, Nick on Vintage Thunderbird Repair, he did a great, great series. I mean, a great, great video. Uh, see the color on those lines there? He did a great, great video. He had the dash removed from the car that he's working on right now, which is a uh, a blue 66 Thunderbird convertible. He calls it the Thelma and Louise car, and it does. It looks just like it, only in much better condition. And uh, he showed everybody where all the vacuum lines go. I mean, if you can't figure it out from that, you're in bad shape, okay? He really did a great job. So when it comes time for me to figure it out, and guess what? I'm going to be looking at that every day, and yeah, I'm going to be in bad shape because some of it, <laughs> some of it, I'm going to, I know I'm going to run into vacuum lines under there that's like, where the heck does this one go? I don't remember seeing that in the video. So I'll be bugging Nick when the time comes. I'm going to try not to. He's a busy man, and he's already done quite a bit for me already. So uh, right now I just want you to see it's pretty clean down in here. It's not, not as bad as it was. So let's see if I can get this baby out of here. That's our heat and heat and uh, air conditioning controls and all that stuff. All right, how difficult is this going to be to get this baby out of here? Well, all I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this fat line and this thin one. That's a junction right there. Let me get zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to disconnect this fat one and that small one right there from that T. And then I'm going to pop out these two light bulbs here and here. And that way, yeah, because they, they run into the, 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 they, the, the wires run into the wire bundle right here. And I don't want to unplug them from here. I don't think, I don't even know if they do unplug. I'll just easier just snap one out, I would think. Just pop it out of there. Then I'm going to disconnect these two uh, plugs here that control the fan, I guess, and that sort of thing. And I'll have to look at it once I get it on the bench. It's difficult to see right now what all that stuff is. And then each of these can come out and they're all labeled that's really great I got a white one here a blue one a red one a yellow one I got a gray one that all correspond to the colors on that wheel now there is a brown one down here that doesn't have anything on it so I don't right next to that screw so I don't know what that is but anyway that should do it that should take care of it so if I run into anything different I'll let you know what is this does this have to come off yeah that's the uh, that's the gray one okay let's unplug it and see what happens well, I'm sure old Nick, uh, he probably got a chuckle out of that, me trying to get this bulb out right here. It doesn't work that way. I had to wind up unplugging it from this plug right here. You got to get a pair of pliers on that baby. A nice big set of needle noses is what I used. Grab a hold of the plug real tight and kind of 
wiggle it back and forth, you know, counterclockwise and clockwise and keep pulling, it'll finally come out. And they're just standard old plugs like this. You can't get this out because <laughs> that screw back there, that, that little screw bolt, is right over the lip of that bulb. Can you believe that? You can't get it out. It won't, it won't let it loose. So I'm sure old Nick, when he heard me say, I'll just unplug those lights, he probably went, sure he will, John. <laughs> In the process of taking off these two electrical plugs here, I had to take a little screwdriver here, you know, a screwdriver flat blade, put it in there and pry it forward to get that thing to come off. Same thing with the bottom one. I haven't got it off yet. Also, look how brittle these lines are. This red one here just snapped right off. I mean, they are so brittle, they just break. Yeah, I'm glad I bought all those brand new lines because we're going to need them, and the rest of them were so loose. I mean, I just, just touched them like that, and they fell right off of each one of these uh, supplies for vacuum. And uh, so they were leaking like a sieve, too. And you can bet that, like, like in the video, uh, Nick shows in the video that this one here will be leaking also and how to hopefully... Uh, reseal it. So go to his website, you T-Bird owners. I keep telling you that. He's got a wealth of information down here. I would have not known any of this without his videos. The last wire to disconnect is this one right here. It's the ground wire. Goes right to the ground on there. I'll unplug that and the entire thing will be on the bed shortly. Now what started out to be, you know, when we first looked at this mess after I took out the center console, you know, it looked pretty daunting. I mean, things looked a mess, but, you know, look. What we have here is vacuum lines on the left, and we have power on the right. So it doesn't look quite so bad now, does it? You break it down to its simplest form, and things get easier. And with all of those vacuum lines labeled, except for that red one that broke, I've got a couple of broken ones here. My goodness, look at here. I've got the red one broken, the yellow one's broken, the blue one is broken. They were just sitting on there. They've been broken for a long time. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, we'll just set those right there. At least we know where they go on that gizmo, on that uh, switch mechanism. Of course, where they go on here, no one knows, unless they labeled it all the way up. It would be nice if they did. Uh, they might have, if it's labeled blue all the way up. So I'll be labeling these things with, uh, I don't know, I may go downtown and get me a bunch of tape and put tape around each one of them. Or... I can use, uh, you know, those uh, little uh, zip ties. I have all different colors. I know I have a yellow, a red, and a blue, and a black. I don't have a gray, of course, but uh, we'll see. I'll tell you what, before we leave the car to go out there and remove that uh, fender indicator, look at the floor. The more I clean it and vacuum it, and it's just the more holes appear. Look at that. I didn't even see those, but these, this, is, this is really, really bad stuff. So we're gonna to have to do some chopping here too. Fortunately, I have prepared for such an event. Well, here's what we're dealing with. This is the one I took off the passenger side. It's just got a couple of nuts on, on a couple of screws that stick out from the bottom and then your wire and that's it. And then of course there's supposed to be a gasket around the bottom where it meets the fender and we'll have to get those. But now this, the nut may come off, or the entire bolt may unscrew with the nut ta fastened to it. If it's rusty like these were, the entire thing came out, not just the, uh, the nut, which made it a little bit easier. So what is it going to take to get those things off real quick? Now old Nick out there, he's just waiting for me to get underneath this car and start struggling and cussing and swearing and, and banging my head and all that stuff, uh, trying to get this off. But I tell you, there's an easy way to do it. All you need is three things. The first thing you need is you got to have a little wire brush like this if you got one. Brass or steel makes no difference. Because what we're going to do with that is we're going to reach up underneath the fender. This is what's called prep work. And we're going to brush off around these, these the heads or the, these uh, nuts here and try to get some of the rust off because these are 11 30 seconds and they build up quite a bit of rust as you can see. I mean water splashes all up underneath the fender in there. I'm going to have to try to figure out some way to prevent that from happening but they get really rusty built up with rust and you can't get the uh, the socket over the nut to get it loose so you got to kind of scrape off the best you can't reach up in there under your hand with your hand your arm yeah, you, you can do it and you just kind of scrape around there best you can and get as, get as much of that uh, rust off and then of course you don't drop it on the floor I'm glad I had my rug down there <laughs> 
All right, the second thing you need is a can of uh, liquid wrench or something like that. Liquid wrench I use for this. And uh, after you uh, have scraped off the rust, you know, with the brush, let me zoom out here a little bit. Kind of hard doing things one-handed sometimes. There we go. Then this thing sprays pretty far, so I'm going to I sprayed it up in there and I soaked it real good, both of these. Uh, you have to be careful, you know, you don't want this stuff going in your eyes, dropping down. Wear goggles, and uh, I just soaked it really good. Matter of fact, it soaked it smoked it soaked good enough that it actually came up between the fender and the bottom of that uh, indicator, and it was actually out in this area here when I took off the uh, the indicator. Boy, it just was everywhere. So. Give it a good, you know, shower down on it. Don't worry, don't worry about it. You know, and then go off and do something else for about, you know, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes and then come back. The last thing you need is you need a ratchet. In this case, I'm going to use the one my boy got me. Power, which is kind of slick. And then, uh, uh, or you can use one of these. It's up to you. And then a whole bunch of extensions with uh, an 11 32nd socket on the end. That'll reach all the way up in there. Get over here see this it'll be long enough the, to where it will reach all the way up in there you want it to go down far enough where you don't have to kill yourself now you may have to separate them until you get the first one up in there you know the bottom part and then snap it together because it may come down and hit the floor you know so you got to kind of pull them apart until you get it both up in there and then push them back together again to where you can get that socket on that nut on the bottom of that uh, indicator and it didn't take me, after I uh, brushed it and just sprayed it and walked away and let it sit for a while, it didn't take me three minutes to get that thing off that fender. So I know that Nick out there in Vintage Thunderbird Repair, he doesn't believe that. And there's some other people who commented too, said, oh man, it was a killer, you know. <laughs>
big old fat thing is no good. Come on, baby. Well, I'm wasting a lot of time here. This thing is just too big, I think. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Let's see what happens. Ta-da! Let me see how long it took. Stop. Two minutes, 58 seconds, 0.73. Okay? Remember I told you it took me three minutes to do the other side? There you go, guys. Positive proof that a positive attitude brings it home. Before I wrap up this video, uh, next time what we're going to do, uh, I have a question first. One of our subscribers, I'll, f I'll go back to the comment section a couple videos ago. He said that he replaced, if I open up that, uh, that uh, vacuum cleaner, I don't find the pieces and parts that came out of this uh, thing right here that I thought fell out that may not have fallen out. Uh, he said he replaced that switch by going to Home Depot. He bought one there and he, and he said it worked perfectly. He just hooked it up. Well, that's cool. My question is, how did you fasten it to the rear? You know, you're not going to go to Home Depot and find one that has screw holes like this that screw it up. If you do, I'd like to know what it looks like or what the number was or whatever. I don't know. Now, you can buy these. You can buy those and replacements, but they're, boy, they're just too expensive. So... If I have to, I will. I just, if I can find a local one. I went to the, my favorite hardware store the other day, and I went through all of his drawers, and we found one that would work. But there was no way to fasten it, you know. It was just square with no tabs of any kind. The only way I could have got away with it would have been to, you know, rough this up and cement it in. I didn't want to do that. We'll see. Uh, so the person, uh, I'll have you on the screen by the time this video is over, but by the time this segment's over, uh, tell me about a little bit more about how you hook that thing up to there because this thing here when you push the button see that, that button that sliding thing right there see how it slides out it has to go out and hit that hit that uh, button or that uh, switch that button switch anyway next uh, next time we're going to go ahead and apply 12 volts to these things to see if they work and one is a left hand and the other is a right hand and as you can see <laughs> This is the uh, left-hand one. See how far down that thing is? That uh, would be, it, you have to have a special tool to remove that. Or you, I think it was Nick or someone told me he made one out of a socket, you know, ground it down until he had that. Uh, we can do that. But the other one looks like this. See how far it sticks out? This is the uh, right-hand one, I think. Let me look here. Yeah, this is the right-hand one. The amber lens is in the wrong place. I think they have this thing in, this, this thing in is upside down. <laughs> Everything in this car, every nook and cranny, every wire, every light, every connection has been handled by some person in the past. It's incredible. Maybe these weren't. And maybe I should thank God for small fares, huh? <laughs> anyway, we'll go ahead and we try to light them up. And, but Nick, he said, you know, you need to open them up and inspect them anyway. Look at the sockets and all that, which is a very good idea. And, uh, you know, the little... The little insulator here is missing, or is broken. I'm going to have to figure out something to do with that. I'm not sure what. Uh, oh, well. More fun and games. It's getting time to really wrap this uh, video up, so let me hustle along here. These bulbs that were in this unit that uh, came out, they pop out through the top. Okay, this the bottom part does not come out. Okay, it would hit that screw anyway like, like it was they just come out yeah I took a little screwdriver and a little, little screwdriver there was a little space between this and this little edge right here and all I did was stick the screwdriver down in there and kind of you know wiggle it left and right and then over here left and right and eventually it came right on up out of there so we'll go ahead and check those out at a later date and what we need to do now is clean this mess up. I'm going to clean the mess up best I can without tearing it all to pieces. And this thing right here. 
I'm not going to talk about this. I'm not going to say anything about it because there's a YouTube video up on Vintage Thunderbird Repair where Nick does an outstanding job. He, he has this thing removed. He's taken out this bolt and this bolt, and he has this in his hand, and he shows you how exactly how to check this thing out, how to repair it. So, you know, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Uh, his wheel would be much better than mine anyway. So go to his uh, uh, Vintage Thunderbird Repair and look for this right here. You'll see it. And he'll go, he goes through all the colors. He goes through how to clean it, how to repair it, how to get it back in. And if, it, if in fact, it is repairable, stuff like that. And uh, he'll show you how to put it back in. Uh, could, part of it is got to drill out this uh, rivet right here in the center. And uh, the rivet's drilled out from uh, this side right here, I believe it is. And uh, so the bottom one is what works that thing. See it? See that thing right there up the top? Let me see if I can do this with two hands here. Nope, that's the top one. Get off that one, John. Now let me go over here. This bottom one right here is the one that has the different switch positions that controls the, the vacuum out to the different things, and he talks all about it. So go there and watch his video. It's for, if you have, you know, it's actually kind of an interesting gizmo, even if you don't have a Thunderbird. It'd be kind of interesting just to go in and see how this thing works. It's all little color wheels. Looks like something at the carnival you spin for money. <laughs> Good job. He does an outstanding job on that. I took the glass off of this. It's plastic. I'm going to have to clean it up a little bit. It's kind of muffed up. And then uh, next time we'll go ahead and check out these lights. And what else are we going to check out? I don't know what we're going to check out. We'll check out a bunch of stuff. I have a small announcement to make. This will be the last video that gets uploaded to YouTube. I have moved 500 of my videos over to odyssey.com. Uh, the reason I did that was because I couldn't move the entire 1,000. You know, uh, when you sign up for an odyssey.com account, they want to know if you want to sync uh, Odyssey with your videos on YouTube. And of course, you know, you say yes. And, uh, or you can wait and do it at a later time. Uh, unfortunately, so what they do then is they go through all, you know, you tell them what your channel name is, they go through all the YouTube videos, I guess, in the planet until they find all of yours. It takes about a week. And uh, once they identify all of yours, then they will transfer a maximum of 500 of them over. So the other 500, basically, in our case, has to stay on YouTube. And, uh, however, all my videos are still on YouTube. I'm just not going to add any more to them. All videos from now on will be uploaded to odyssey.com. And I'm doing that because I can't stand, you know, the YouTube censorship that it seems to be dominant now in the YouTube platform. Uh, you, you know, YouTube is a great place to upload videos for years. They took good care of us. They took good care of me. I know that. I never had any problems. Once in a while, they would let me know to some song I had on one of my videos, you know, some crybaby outfit, you know, uh, didn't like the fact that I had that song on there that was done, you know, 30 years ago or 40 years ago. So they had, they had no choice per agreement with these organizations to take that video down. I understood that, you know, and I understood at the time I did it that it was pretty risky. You know, you put that song up there, and, eh, you know, okay, if it gets deleted, the, the video gets deleted, okay, I was willing to accept that. However, I had a second channel that knew, no one knew about and uh, no one knows about to this day. And I used it for political purposes. You know, I'm, I'm not a guy who just sits here working on Thunderbirds and radios and sitting in my yard and waiting to die. I, I get involved in the, uh, in the political side of the house. You can ask Brendan about that. He, he's my sounding board in many cases. Apparently someone didn't like what I said about Bernie Sanders one day, and so he deleted the entire channel. Some little soy drinker out there in California. You know, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know. It's okay if he disagrees with me, and it's okay if I disagree with him, but he shouldn't have the power to just wipe out my entire channel because he didn't happen to think uh, uh, that one thing I put down was, was appropriate uh, per his ideals, okay, or his values as they call them out there. You know, no second chance. You know, they, they, they should at least give the guy a second chance. You know, say, hey, look, you know, we don't, we don't particularly like this. You know, we're a bunch of little liberals out here, and we have the power to destroy your, your channel. You know, and at that time, I would say, okay, you know, go ahead and destroy it. But at least that call would be mine, not theirs. 
or they give you a warning. You know, you know, change it. We give you 30 days to change it. If not, then we'll go ahead and delete that particular video. You don't have to delete the whole channel. What a bunch of morons, you know. Anyway, I'm out of there. I'm away from YouTube. They were great until they decided to hit the political field. And now it's, you know, who needs it? You know, we've lived our lives uh, all these years without YouTube. We Believe me, we can live our lives the rest of it without YouTube. Don't need I don't have Twitter. Who would ever want Twitter? And uh, I don't have Facebook. Don't care about Facebook. I figure Zuckerberg's plenty rich enough without leaning on me for money. And same thing with YouTube. So censorship, I can't put up with it. You know, and I won't put up with it. And I don't, it's just all there's to it. So beginning with the next video, which I believe will be, what, 110? Uh, I'll be uploading that to odyssey.com. Those of you who want to follow, uh, it will not show up on YouTube. Uh, but everything, if I were to put it on YouTube, it would also show up on Odyssey because it's an automatic switchover from here on. But that's not going to happen. I'm out of YouTube. I don't want any more part of it uh, as far as supporting their censorship practices. That's just, it's just unacceptable to me as an American. It's un-American to do that. These guys just don't seem to understand that. Anyway, enough of my rambling on about that. It's just go to odyssey.com, uh, sign up for an account, or just go there. It'll be under my uh, current YouTube name. I also have a second channel there somehow in, in the process of doing all this switchover. I don't know how it happened, but it'll be my YouTube uh, handle with the number two at the end. So it's either going to be my current YouTube handle or the one with the uh, same handle with the number two at the end. You can search either one of those and probably find it. So some of you don't like this, they're all too bad. You know, there's nothing I can do about it other than uh, recommend that you get away from YouTube also if you're putting up videos. Anyone who hates censorship should get off of YouTube. They should get off of you, uh, Twitter. They should get off of Facebook. We don't need these guys telling us what to do, what not to do. Now, to be fair, YouTube does not charge any money. Do they have a right to censor? Yes, they do. But, you know, you don't wait years and all of a sudden slam everybody with this crazy stuff, especially in the arena of politics where everybody's going to disagree. Everybody will disagree, but that's no reason that to, you know, to choke the censorship down our throat. That's the way I feel about it. And, uh, you know, all I can say is uh, I hope to see you on odyssey.com, which is a, it's a, it's a uh, free site. It's, it's a, a site that's freedom from censorship. Now they have the standard copyright stuff. You can't put up copyright things, things that we had on YouTube also. But, uh, Matter of fact, when you sign when you sign up and you go in and sign up, the first thing they say, a the thing pops up on the screen and says, You're free! <laughs> free to be, you know, freedom of speech, free to do what you wish as long as you stay within certain guidelines that are pretty much standard across the industry. So until next time, hope to see you on Odyssey. This is John.